Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be taking a look at the HTC One M8 for Windows for Verizon. This is the Windows Phone 8 version of the HTC One M8 Android phone that we saw earlier this year. And if you are interested in picking this up, you can get it from Verizon for $199.99 on a standard two-year contract, $24.99 a month for Verizon Edge users, or if you want to buy the phone outright, it will be $599.99. I would also like to thank HTC for sending this over to me for review. The full specs can be found in the written review that's linked down below in the video's description. So first, let's start off with design. The M8 features a metal unibody design with a zero gap construction between the various components and sections. The back is curved so it feels comfortable to hold in your hand, but sometimes the metal casing can actually be a little bit slippery, so I do recommend getting a case for the device. On the top is our IR blaster and power button, while the right side has our volume rocker and micro SD card slot. The left side has the nano SIM tray, while the bottom has the micro USB port and 3.5mm headset jack. The back is where you'll find two cameras, your main ultra pixel camera, which is a 4 megapixel camera, as well as a second camera which is used for depth of field or focusing after you've taken a shot, in addition to a dual LED flash. And moving along to the front, we have our dual front-facing boom sound speakers, the 5 megapixel front-facing camera, as well as our 5 inch 1080 by 1920 display. The design is really nice and even after the Galaxy Note 4 and the Nexus 6's launches, the HTC One M8 still looks very good. We'll have to see what they do next year with the M9, if that happens to be what it's called. The speakers here are just completely fantastic, they're a joy to listen to. The speakers are also quite loud. The display looks fantastic, everything is very crisp and clear, the color accuracy seems pretty good and it's not too oversaturated. The viewing angles are top notch. One thing I've noticed is that there seems to be a display when using the touchscreen. It's very minor but compared to other devices, there seems to be a difference between when you physically tap the screen and when something actually happens. The device obviously runs Windows Phone 8.1, which I really do like. Your tile home screen does take some getting used to, but after a while you do find it quite efficient to access your apps. You can also put apps into folders, in addition to viewing all of your apps in a list. All of the animations across Windows Phone 8 are just completely smooth and very fluid, which I like, which seems to be an issue with most Android phones still. Another good thing about Windows Phone is that you can uninstall pretty much most of the applications that you don't want. And if the phone came with an app that you want to re-download later, you can do so from the Windows Phone store. While Windows Phone still has a limited app selection, there are still quite a few apps and you should be able to find alternatives for most apps if you're coming from different platforms. Performance is very good and Windows Phone as a whole is a very different beast compared to Android and iOS. And even on low-end devices, Windows Phone still performs very well. So with this quad-core powerhouse, performance is excellent, applications launch quickly, animations and scrolling are silky smooth as I already mentioned, and everything seems to work very well. Games though, some games just don't seem very well optimized for Windows Phone, they just seem like Android or iOS ports which could use some extra work, but some games that do perform well, obviously perform well. Battery life is also another strong plus, I was able to consistently get two days of moderate to heavy usage I would say. I left Wi-Fi off the entire time, had many hours of Spotify streaming, web browsing, social media checks on Facebook and Twitter, loading web pages, updating apps over LTE, and watching LTE videos, and I was able to get two days of use. My brightness was kept on the low preset most of the time, which worked just fine in dark areas as well as indoors. Outdoors you'll definitely want to turn the display brightness up to max, which will decrease your battery life. I imagine if you are a light user or use Wi-Fi a lot of the time, you might be able to get three days of use out of a single charge. One undocumented feature of the smartphone is voice over LTE, which routes your voice calls through the LTE data network. This allows for much faster call connect times and fast data speeds while in calls. I can't disable it, but it seems to work just fine, no issues with voice over LTE calls. If you happen to live in a Verizon X LTE area, you should be able to get very fast LTE speeds. I've seen download speeds exceeding 100 megabits per second, which is very fast, obviously. Camera quality might be the weakest point of the device. The four megapixel rear facing camera makes it so that you can't zoom into your photos too much, so you, there's not a whole lot of detail in that respect. But photos generally come out looking okay, and if you wanna share them online or through emails, it does the job just fine. The second camera on the back does make for some interesting and fun photos when you want to refocus after you've taken a photo, but it's not something that most people will find themselves using very often. 
Video quality was just fine and I do like how you are able to record in 60 frames per second. And to conclude, HTC made the right move by offering a Windows Phone version of the HTC One M8. It finally gives users who prefer that ecosystem excellent hardware, which may also open it up to potential switchers. I've always been a fan of Windows Phone, so I was pretty excited to see this device come to market. With the minor display issues aside and sort of the subpar camera experience, the user experience as a whole was fantastic. I really enjoyed using the device in addition to Windows Phone 8.1, so here's to hoping that 2015's flagship from HTC also gets Windows Phone treatment. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all very soon.